The thought of space travel has always been something pretty mind-blowing to me. The fact we can shoot people out of Earth's atmosphere to explore the moon and beyond is absolutely crazy. But something that has always bothered me is the huge plume of smoke that gets shot out of the back of rockets as they launch into space. Realistically, the low number of launches per year, which was 114 in 2020, means the total emissions are pretty negligible. However, with more and more launches happening each year, these total emissions are expected to increase. Also, the emissions from rockets can be much more toxic than other vehicles, with solid fuel rockets releasing hydrogen chloride and aluminium oxide. The commonly used rocket propellant RP-1 has emissions similar to those from car engines, which include CO2, soot, carbon monoxide and sulphur compounds. But the fact that rocket emissions don't go through any filtration system and are put into different sections of the atmosphere means they can have much greater negative effects, but this isn't fully understood yet. If you want to know more about these emissions, I highly recommend this video by Everyday Astronaut. I'll leave a link to it in the description below the like button. So what can be done about these emissions? Well, one option is to use liquid hydrogen as the fuel, with an oxidizer such as liquid oxygen. This means that provided the hydrogen came from renewable energy, there would be no carbon emissions. Though, this is currently extremely unlikely as almost all of it comes from steam reforming natural gas. But let's say the hydrogen is made from clean energy and has no associated carbon emissions. The rocket would still emit water vapour, which is actually one of the most potent greenhouse gases of them all. Also, because it is emitted far out into the atmosphere, it doesn't have a chance to recirculate like it would from the back of a hydrogen powered car so it may actually result in greenhouse gas effects. Using liquid methane as a fuel is similar, with some CO2 thrown into the mix as well that could be offset if the methane is made sustainably. But again, as it is emitted so high into the atmosphere, it may take a long time to recirculate, if ever at all. This isn't sounding very optimistic, but I think the removal of toxic gases being shot into the atmosphere when using liquid hydrogen or methane instead of solid rocket fuel is a big step forward. But a small rocket company called Blue Shift have a different idea. They have successfully developed a sustainably sourced solid rocket biofuel. This biofueled rocket is the first of many planned launches. The first rocket that was recently launched, the Stardust 1.0, stood 6 meters high, flew around 1,250 meters into the air, and had a payload of 8 kilograms. However, Blue Shift have their sights set on the launch of the Red Dwarf rocket in 2024, which will be able to reach low Earth orbit with a payload of 30 kilograms. This is all part of their disruptive plan to become an Uber type service into space, launching small systems like Cube Satellites or CubeSats into low Earth orbit, which can offer advanced communications and weather prediction. So why are they using solid biofuel instead of liquid hydrogen? Well, in the words of the company's CEO, the fuel is non-toxic, carbon neutral, and can be cheaply sourced from farms across America. That last point about it being cheap to source may be a key part of the answer as to why it is preferred over liquid hydrogen. Additionally, solid rocket fuel is easier and cheaper to store, with increased safety due to little or no risk of explosion during ignition. This low cost and ease of storage will be extremely important, as Blue Shift are aiming to reach two launches a week. With reusable rockets, the fuel will likely be among the largest costs for the company, much like it is in the aviation industry where it makes up over 10% of all operational costs. Therefore, getting it as cheaply as possible is essential, and also the emissions may be less damaging than the water vapour from hydrogen rockets. So how have they managed to do this? Firstly, the rocket propulsion isn't just solid fuel, instead it uses a hybrid system, using both solid biofuel and a liquid oxidizer like oxygen or nitrous oxide. This gives a key advantage over purely solid rocket fuel, as it enables the thrust of the rocket to be controlled. A hybrid rocket system works by releasing pressurized oxidizer through the solid fuel grain and igniting it with a spark. The ignition of the gas increases its pressure and it shoots out at a high velocity from the nozzle, 
providing thrust to the rocket. I'm no rocket scientist, but there does seem to be some debate on the use of hybrid rocket engines, as they have added complexity of the compressed liquid oxidizer, though the benefits for Blue Shift seem to make it the best option for them. These include increased fuel density compared to liquid fuels, which allows for a higher payload, improved safety over liquid fuels, and improved controllability over solid fuels. Now the real question on everyone's mind is, what is the secret to their solid biofuel? Now this is highly sensitive information, so there is a little available on it, apart from the fact that it is made from agricultural material. Common solid fuel choices in hybrid rockets include polyethylene or paraffin wax. Now this is purely speculation, but I imagine the bio rocket fuel could be a sustainable wax type alternative to paraffin wax like soy wax for example. However, I'm sure it is much more complicated than that in practice. Overall, this looks like a really interesting company that could disrupt the aerospace sector by enabling cheap transportation of small satellites into low earth orbit without large emissions of toxic gases. Due to the burning of a biofuel wax, it is likely there'll be some carbon emissions and soot, though there will be no toxic gases such as hydrogen chloride seen from conventional solid rocket fuel. These carbon emissions would technically be offset as the carbon is sequestered during the growth of, for example, soybeans used in the fuel. However, because of the high altitudes that the rocket flies to, the effects of emissions are not fully understood. But when compared to hydrogen fuel which emits water vapour, the emissions of carbon into the upper atmosphere may be less impactful as it has a lower global warming potential, meaning that a certain amount of CO2 would result in less global warming than the same amount of water vapour. However, it should be noted that there are still a lot of unknowns, but in my opinion, that's what makes it interesting. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. Please like the video as it really helps out, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Also thanks to everyone for helping the channel surpass 32,000 subscribers and make sure to leave any topic ideas in the comments below and I'll add them to the current list. Thanks and I'll see you next time.